Well, I'm headed down to the shop. A number of you have asked me to do a video series painting that Indian I just did. So Judy and I thought, well, we'll just go down to the shop and take a crack at it. Sure is nice out here today. Perfect fall weather. Anyway, here we are. And there's where the magic happens. Okay, it's been a while since we've been down here making videos, so let me just run over a few things before we get started. Alright, here's the piece we're going to paint, okay? And it's in one, two, three, four pieces, alright? And, uh, but, and I got my base all done. I haven't varnished it yet, and it's not been, uh, well, I haven't stained it yet, and it hasn't been varnished. It's still raw. I mentioned before, I like to bring my bases right along with the carving. As soon as I get the carving fairly well blocked out, I'll go ahead and build the base to make sure that what I'm doing is actually going to work. Because sometimes, you know, you'll do a carving or something, and then you're stuck with the idea of having to do a base for it, if you're going to put it on a base which I always think is the best thing to do. So anyway, this base was finished long before any of this detail or anything else took, took place. The head I did first, and then I did the body, and then I did the feathers, and, uh, and the little choker addition up here. So, Back and it's time to start painting. I always take half a sheet and just lay it up here. Alrighty, so let's take this guy apart. Now someone asked me here just recently. Why don't you, why don't you carve the quill? Well, because when a carving is reduced to this size, that quill is hardly going to show up. And I'm going to indicate it with just a, a, a light little strip of paint. And that's, that's perfect. That's all you need to do. Remember, you're reducing everything down to get to the size of your carving. If this was a real thing, that head would probably be about this big around with the hair and everything. Well, we're taking it way down to that size there. So a lot of the uh, detail is going to disappear, like in the eyes. I could never paint a doll eye in there, and by that I mean, uh, you know, the out, out, outer part of the iris and then I, iris, and then the inner part on this Indian because. All it would show up would be just a black dot when it's reduced to the size that this is. This is. So it's, it's just a waste of time to try to paint that. Besides, Indians don't have doll eyes, so I don't worry about that. So anyway, take that off. Take this off. Take this off. This is my mount here. Take those little things off. I always make my holes a little larger than, than the dowel that anchors it so I can squeeze some more uh, glue in there when it's all put together. So, what do I paint first? Well, I always paint the head first. So let me get this stuff out of the way. Take one of these things here. Put it up there right in the base of the piece. Get my water thing here. Give him a bath. Now watch, watch how this wood changes colors. Right there, you see that up there on top? See how it went from it went from this color to that color. Quite a bit of difference. So that 
when you're painting, you have to take that into consideration. Unless you're laying, laying so much on there that you could get away with using house paint on it, which I don't doubt that some people do. So anyway, the color we're after is with red iron oxide. That's about the color of blood. That out. That's, that's plenty. Yellow ochre. In this case, it's antique gold, which is the same color. But yellow ochre is the color of a human skin or body when it's been drained completely of blood. So we're going to use a little bit of this. And I'm going to use a little bit of brown. This is asphaltum. It's a real rich brown. Come on out of there. Anytime. There it was. That's plenty. Because red. As, or, uh, red on oxide and yellow ochre thinned down is just about the color of a white person. But using more red and a little bit of brown, you're going to get a richer color, which would be the color of a Native American. I'm going to get my big brush here and mix. Mix this paint together. That's a little too brown, so it's more red back in here. That's looking good. Get all that out of my brush. I like to see I like to see through the wash and by painting on a piece of glass see I got the shadow down below here from the paint I can see right through that paint to see the type of uh, the heaviness of the paint that's going to go on my carving it's kind of dry right there painting this head, I'm not concerned about slopping over on his hair or anything because this paint will be lighter than the paint that the hair is, so I can cover that up if I make a make a slip. Place, um, places that the sun hits, you want to put a little extra paint on there. No, that's, that's his nose, and it, this doesn't indicate that he drinks a lot. It's just the way things are. Just 
take it up away and then just blend it out like that. This brush is good for using a lot of paint, but not so good for the detail. And then I'm going to take a little red here and right out here where the sun would hit his hit his eyes, cheeks. Clean the glass off there. You probably a lot of you part thinking, boy, I sure squeezed out a lot of paint for the little bit that I used. Yes, I certainly did. I'm not interested in how much paint I waste. Paint's pretty cheap. I want to get the best result on my carving, so I use a lot of paint just in case I'm going to, I'm going to need all of it. Because I might come back later and use that. Okay, the next step is where's the color? Name of the color? Come on. Oh, that's the black. I said definitely don't want that. Midnight blue. I'm not going to squeeze out so much of this. Get rid of that. That's, that's plenty. Probably aren't going to use hardly any of that. So this right here, that's what I'm after. This is an old fella. Looks pretty good. All right. Oh, again, wipe up what I don't use here. This is licorice, is the name of this color right here. It's black, but it has a little bit of uh, white in it. Not a lot, just a little bit to change it from pitch black. Black, pure black is a transparent color, and I don't want a transparent color here. Licorice is an opaque color, and that's exactly what I want. So, I'm going to squeeze that. And about this point, I switch glasses to my three power glasses. 
you can uh, let me put my other glasses on here so I can see what it says. These are readers, you can buy them down to Walmart, the price just went up. These are plus threes. Now these things work really great for paint and detail and they're cheap. They're better than you know that thing you put on your head and pull down in front of you. So we get our black out here. And we start putting on here for the hair. Remember that little hook that I was talking about? See the hook on this brush? That really gives me a lot of control. What I do is I just go along and outline the hair. You just take that little hook, lay your brush down, and just push it right down in there. And when you're painting, don't be a dabber. Load your brush up. It'll hold a lot of paint. I like to paint almost as much, if not more, sometimes, and actually carving figures. Oh, what's that? If you're real quick. Take a boo boo. You can come in and get rid of it. Hopefully. If you can't get rid of it like that, because the black is so strong, hmm? I'll show you what you can do in a minute. Now that little hook on the end of the brush, that's not something you can buy. That comes from the brush itself over time. The more you use your brush to keep it clean and everything, the It'll eventually show up all on its own.
able to get down in there. Unless. I get a brush that will allow me to get down in there. There we go. Okay. And now that we got it painted, Spot a mist right there. This little area right there, see the gray? That's the epoxy that's holding this bread braid to the head. I'll have to come back later and probably double coat that with the with the color the braids are. Joplin today, Missouri. It's just about an hour up the road here from where we live. Went down to Fred and Red's Cafe. They've been in business since the 20s. Not the, not the 2020s, the 1920s. They're known for their spaghetti red. That's spaghetti topped with chili. Which is very tasty. We were going to go have a steak because it's our uh, wedding anniversary here just a few days ago. Where Judy and I, we've been married 56 years, hard to believe. And here she is holding the video camera while I paint. You say good help is hard to find. Well, I found a good, good one. As long as she does everything that I thought was good to Right? Okay, he's coming alive here. Yeah, she's all right. It's too late to trade her in. Not that I'd want to. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to look real closely over the piece and see if there's any what a friend of mine called holidays. Little, little bitty spots that I've missed. They always show up. There's some right there. Look at that. There's a big one. Move this thing around. There's another one. There's another one. There's one. 
Hmm? Can't see him. They always show up after you think you've got them all. There's one up here now. See right there? See it? A little bitty white spot right there. Zap, it's gone. One there, one there. They're all over the place. Take some darker paint and get that bit of epoxy to turn it over. Look, there's a big one. One there. I think I got them all. Okay, remember I said that uh, I'd show you how to get rid of that mistake. Don't get too close, I won't be able to see. carve it right off of it. You can see when I'm doing this how far down get off of there that goes. I think that's gonna be as far as I take it. And there's that little brush. And now you know I leave some of this paint around. Now, with the color, this is, I've been using this instead of white, but white's a little strong, I found. This is called parchment. It has a little yellow in it. With this, and get right down in there, right up into the corner. There's a word for that area that's called the sclera. I believe that's right white part of the eye, which actually isn't white. I don't want it really bright white because 
This guy is old. His eyes or his sclera turns yellow over time. You get right back up in that corner there. And I'm going to try something this time. I'm going to use a little bit of brown. And I'm going to make sure my finger's clean. Tone that down even more. Just like I say, this is an old guy. His arms, eyes aren't bright like they used to be. And I'm going to put a little more brown back in here. Ooh, I like that color. That really makes it look nice. That's perfect. There's a little tag right there. Get out of there. There, I got it. There. Okay. Now with the hair dryer, Okay, now this is called Winter's Whisper, this piece of carving. What's going on is he's looking up at the sky, watching an approaching, approaching storm. So I want him looking up in that direction. So with some black paint on the end of the toothpick,
there. That looks just about what I'm looking for. But I don't know if I have enough paint to do it. Now, I don't want a great big iris doll I got. I definitely don't want that. All I want is just enough to make it right. Think. Nope. I think that's good. <laughs> He's got I'm a rock and red, a rock and red ski. Okay, that's going to about do it for this video. Let me put things back together again. Just to see what we got here. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to give him a red braids. Can't do that now because I think we've spent enough time on it. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and I might go ahead and paint these braids red, and uh, we'll paint the feathers next time, and uh, start on the the robe and the shirt. Okay. So until then, I'll talk to you later.